Hello and welcome to the HTML 101 Kickstart video course. This particular video is video number one and that is the introduction to HTML. Just want to say congratulations on grabbing access to this video course. So many people online, whether it's online business, online careers, or anything mainly doing to do with setting up web pages or landing pages, regardless of what niche that you are in, you oftentimes face these technological pains over and over again when it comes to setting up these basic landing pages. Even if you're using something like WordPress or Joomla, and it's a content management system that most of the things are done for you, there will be at times when you need to edit things like hyperlinks or even basic things like headers, images, break tags to make things look nice and they run into snags along the way. So if you run into those snags like everybody else along the road because you do not know basic HTML coding, then don't fret. That's the purpose of this video course. So what I want to do is start out with some of the basics and then we will move out to some of the more advanced when you feel like you're more confident and you get your feet wet. Now, before we jump into the introduction piece, I want to give you a quick videos overview so you know exactly what to expect and exactly what we are going to talk about step by step throughout this video course. So obviously this is going to be video number one. Video number two is going to be hacking without knowing code. So I want to start out with utilizing a HTML editing tool called a WYSIWYG tool. More on that in just a minute. Now, by utilizing that tool, it'll get your feet wet so that you can feel a little bit more confident when it comes to HTML code. So you'll be able to see the code and you'll be able to see what it looks like in the browser view. So by hacking without knowing code, this is a, a specific strategy that you can utilize in the future where if you don't know coding, there's still a way to hack around HTML coding and make things look nice and things like that. But at the end of the day, you want to know basic HTML coding, which we'll dive into video number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So number three, we're going to talk about the basics of open and closed tags. Once you understand this basic concept and how HTML code opens and closes via their tags, which is very, very simple, by the way, it will make more sense. And then from that point on, what I've done is I've honed in and focused on specific tags that you will run into during your journey. So headings is something that you're going to run into on and on and on. So we're going to focus on that in video number four, video number five. We're going to talk about break tags. Break tags allow you to break sentences up so that you have white space in between. This is also good by creating white space between images and everything like that. Video number six, we're going to talk about basic formatting, you know, underlining, bolding, italicizing, things like that, that you are going to run into. Video number seven, we're going to talk about lists, unordered lists and order lists. How do you create these types of lists? Because this is something that you're going to want to do. And video number eight, we're going to talk about image tags, how to make them SEO friendly, and of course, video number nine, we're going to talk about hyperlinks. Now, not just how to create a hyperlink, but how to make it so when somebody clicks on it, it opens up in a new window. So this is something that you are going to face over and over again. And that's why we're focusing specifically on these tags. Now, in order to memorize HTML code, I want to give you some pointers. You do not need to learn all HTML code. So that's good. Do not get you know, freaked out or anything like that. You do not need to learn all HTML code. You just need to know the basics and it'll make more sense as we dive in. And what I recommend that you do is that you should always be able to refer back to this video course at a later time. And if you want to watch through the end of the video course and then implement things and then refer back, that's totally fine. Now, one thing I found that helps when it comes to memorization oftentimes is that it's easier to do things while I teach, you know, to make things stick. So while I teach, if you want to pause the video at any time and then implement it yourself, that will actually stick more stronger 
in your brain so that it, as you act and you do it, it'll stick in your mind. So some people are different. That works very well with kinesthetic visual learners. You can watch all the way to the end and then follow along. That's totally fine. So do what's best for you. Don't feel like you have to do it in a certain way. So now let's talk about the tools that you're going to need. Obviously, I'm not going to require you to dish out any more money. So we are going to stick with a lot of free things like Composer. Composer actually is a tool that I use. Even though I understand HTML coding, I still use Composer because Composer is a great way to hack, like I said, without needing to know a lot of code. So we will talk about more about that in video number two. Now, Composer is another WYSIWYG HTML editor tool. You don't have to use Composer if you don't want to. If you want to go to Google and you type in WYSIWYG, HTML editor, as you can see here, then you'll see a variety of other tools. Now, the what you see is what you get. That means that it's kind of like Microsoft Word in a sense that you can see what's happening on the screen, but on the back end, there's a lot of code that's happening. So I'll show you that in just a minute. And Composer, I'd highly recommend. We use it all the time and we always recommend it for many, many years. It's been going well strong well over five, six, seven years. Now, you can always refer back to W3 schools as well if you want to. But as far as tools that you have to pay for, none that we would recommend right now. So that's it, nothing really fancy. And if you wanna know how to find Composer, let me go ahead and show you that right now. So the easiest way to access Composer, the HTML editing tool, because we are going to be utilizing this tool in this video course is by going to kompoze.net, as you can see up right here. So that's kompoze.net. So it's kind of like Composer with a C, but it has a K. Now, as you can see, it is a easy web authoring tool. It's what we call a what you see is what you get. So you see it on the screen as a web editing tool and the code will actually be shown on the back end. So I'll show you that in just a minute, but I highly recommend just go ahead and download this. This one is for Windows. So if you are using a Mac or Linux computer, that's fine. It is compatible as well. You just got to go to the download link here. So if you go here, you'll be able to see there's a stable version and there is a developed version. But if you scroll all the way about midpoint of the page, you'll see different languages. You'll see them for Windows installers, Windows zip files, Mac OS, download images, and Linux as well. So it is compatible to just about any type of PC, an operating system, the three main ones right here. So go ahead and download that, install that onto your computer, because that is what we will be using next. Now, before I move on to video number two, we are going to talk about the basic structure of an HTML body. So whenever you create a new HTML page, then basically what it looks like is at the top, you're going to have an HTML tag and think about it wrapping it around. If you think can think about it. So you have the HTML, you have the head, which is right underneath the HTML. So this is kind of saying, okay, this is a HTML page. And then the next thing you'll see is the head. And if you think about a human body, you have the head and then right, maybe on the head right below that, you could have like a name tag, like the title or something. And then right below that or on that, you can have a body. And then of course you have your feet and everything like that. So that's probably the easiest way to think about it. You have HTML. If you can think of like a stick figure or something, you got the HTML guy, he's got a head and then he's got a name tag. That's a title. And then he's got a body. If you can remember that, then it's actually fairly easy to understand when I move on to video number two and I, I break it down for you. So let's move on to video number two and it, it'll make a lot more sense when we actually go there. So in video number two, we're going to talk about hacking HTML without knowing code. And what I mean by that is being able to set up landing pages and basic web pages and understanding how to do it without knowing code is the first way to get your feet wet and get yourself confident. So let's get started. 
So what I want you to go ahead and do is go ahead and open up Composer and pause this video if you need to, and we'll get started. So what I mean by hacking HTML, as I said earlier, is we are using a tool that will allow us to see what the user sees via the browser without actually having to add our own code. Now, this is the normal view. So at the very bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see the normal tab, as you can see here. And then you're going to see the source tab. So the source tag is going to reveal the actual HTML code to us. And as I stated in the previous video, I basically went over the basic structure. You can see there is an HTML tag here. There is a heading tag and the heading tag get, gets closed here. And then the body starts here and so forth. Now I will talk more about open and close tags and the concept of that in the next video. So don't worry about that right now. Let's just focus on utilizing the tool so that you can use it, get confident, get your feet wet right now. So the nice thing about Composer is it looks kind of like Microsoft Word, but a simplified version of it in a way. So what you see is what you get. So what you see in the normal tab is what you get. So let's say, for example, that we are going to say dog training. And then we highlight that. We can center align that, as you can see here. We can left align, right align, and so forth. You can bold it. You can make it bigger by clicking on here. You can also make it smaller. So what you see here is what the user is going to see. And that is what the, what you see is what you get HTML editor. Now you can also change the color, let's say to red. And we can also change the background to, let's say something like yellow. So this would be a highlighted color if we wanted the full whole line to turn, let's say yellow, we could do that as well. You can also go further and you can add things like tables. So let's go back here and remove the highlight and we can add a table. So what I like about Composer is it gives you the ability to specify, okay, I want this many columns and I want this many rows. So in this case, I'm just going to do four and you can specify the cell spacing, which is in between each cell. How much spaces do you want? So this is a table here. We can always tweak it if we would like to. So if we right click here, for example, and we go to table cell properties and we go to table, we can add more rows. So if we are not satisfied that it only has two, we can always add 10. And if we're not satisfied by two columns, we could add something like five. And we could also remove the border. So you can actually see the border here, but we can actually remove it so that the users do not see the border. And it becomes like this. So if we do that, then the user can't see the actual border and they don't realize that there's a table there and you can start adding text. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do and in addition to that, you can also add images. You can add forms. You can also add links to other websites and you can make sure that they open in new windows. So if somebody clicks on your link and you want them to stay on your web page, but you want to bring them to another page. So it opens in a new window. You can say something like HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com as an example. And you can say link is to be open in a new window. So when you do that, when somebody clicks this link, it's going to open in a brand new window. And that way they don't forget about your own window. And I'm going to actually show you the code to do this because once you have memorized this code, it's going to make your life a lot easier. You're not going to have to fully rely on composer, which you can, but it's just going to slow you down. Now, if we take a look in the source, we can see that it has changed from the basic HTML header body and so forth. So now we have a huge empty table here, which is the 
table. And that, that's what's so easy about HTML is you can specify, you can read this, you can say, okay, the, here's a table, you know, here is the actual link right here. And it'll make more sense. Don't worry about it. Don't let this code freak you out or anything like that. So I just wanted to show you that it changed and it changed slightly. Now you can also add things like images. So if we click on image here, we can specify the location of the image. Now, one thing to be aware of with composer is when you specify the location of the image, generally speaking, if you, let's say, we'll we'll pick one image here. By default, let's say, for example, that we are going to choose this image here. Now, as you can see, this image location is actually pointing straight to my computer, which is not really what we want. What we want it to do is we want it to point to the actual website. Now, in general, I'd say the best thing and the easiest way to do it is simply linking directly to the image itself. So the image file name I would put here and I would remove everything else before that. So that way the image actually shows up. Now you can't see the image because right now it is pointing to the website. But if you know how to add a image via the actual HTML code and you know the HTML code itself, then you won't have to face this problem. You will know how to fix this issue, which is why I say we are going to focus on these basic tags and then you will learn exactly how to make these tags and they are standard. They do not change. And because that is the case, my hope is by the end of this video course, when you run into these issues, you will no longer have these issues again because you will have the right weapon, which is the code in hand in your brain. So that's how to add an image. And we'll talk more about the other codes in the next video. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about open and closed tags. Now this is the basic fundamentals so that once you understand this it's going to make more sense when you see the code itself. So basically in order to create an HTML document, it always has to have HTML with brackets surrounding it and then a closed tag, which is, looks like the open tag, except for you have a slash right before the words that are inside of the bracket. As long as you understand this is an open tag and this is a closed tag, then all the tags that you're going to see in the codes and the syntax and the language, they all have an open tag and a closed tag with exception to the break tag. So I'll show you that in just a minute. Now, if we go over to composer and we take a look at the source code here, you'll notice that the HTML tag here starts here. And then at the very end, it closes up, right? And then of course the head tag has what we call an open tag right here. It opens it up and then you have to close the head right here. So same with the title tag, the title tag, this is open, opening the title. And then within here, you can put the actual title. So let's say for example, that we have a dog training blog post that talks about how to, how to stop your puppy from biting. So you know how do you go to Google and you see the titles for each website. And then of course you see a description that is where the title is right here. You're getting a quick glimpse of how the code here gets read by the browser. And then of course by Google or other search engines. So you see how this works. So we have an open tag and then we close this sentence with the close tag for this particular word title. And then of course heading, you can see here, we close the heading and then after you close the head, then you can start with the body. Now you see how the body starts here and then the body closes here. So everything else 
that's actually inside of your landing page is going to be inside of the body. Now notice that the break tag does not have an open and close tag. The break tag can essentially stand alone. So you're going to have some words that are standalone that don't need an open and close. But if we go to the normal view and let's say, for example, that we want to center align a word. So we'll do word. We will center align that. Now, if I go to source, you can see that a div tag is being used to center align that word and the div tag gets closed. Now, don't worry about the div tag or all these other tags. I'm trying to explain the concept that in most cases, something has to be opened and closed, right? So you can have all sorts of words and then you close it down. Now, if I go back to normal and let's say I want to bold a word and I go back to source, you can see that the style has been added for bold. Now you don't need to know this stuff. I'm just showing you this so that you understand that for most cases, there's an open tag and a closed tag for the majority of cases. And then of course, there are certain cases that are rare cases like the break tag, which can stand alone. That does not need an open and closed tag. Essentially it is the same. So now that you understand this concept, you can actually begin to move on to the next videos and we'll go over the basic tags like the break tag, the hyperlink tag and everything like that. So don't worry about understanding the tags and what they mean yet. Just understand that, you know, we have the basic HTML tag and then they close down the basic head tag and they close down. So one way to learn HTML without me even teaching you is simply by going to the normal view, doing one step at a time. So like I showed you earlier, we start from scratch. If I go down, down here, I click on source. I can see what has changed. So I, I've essentially made a lot of breaks. So spaces and enters down here. And I put the word word here. I take a look at source and ask yourself what has changed. Look at the code see what has changed and then do the next step, make it bold, see what has changed at that point. So that's another good way to learn HTML from scratch by actually doing something to it that you want it to do, whether changing the color, making it bigger, changing the heading. And that's a good way to learn HTML by a step-by-step -step manner. So with that said, I'm going to go to the next videos and we will show you exactly other tags that are very common that you are likely to face. See you there. Hello and welcome back. This particular video, we are going to talk about heading tags. As you know, whenever you create a blog post or a landing page or a website, you will notice that the headings at the very top tend to be very, very big, right? So that's what we're going to talk about is that particular tag. Now that particular tag, you'll oftentimes people say H1 tags, H2 tags, H3 and more. So really what it's defined by, if we do an H1 tag, it's remember there's two brackets that are surrounding that particular word H1. So it can be lowercase H and it can be uppercase H. It really doesn't matter. So if you're wondering if there's a difference, there's really no difference. So you start that tag out. So you open the tag up and now you can put the word. So this is going to be your headline, your heading, the big word title, whatever you want it to be. So you will write out the headline text here. And when it's time to close that down, remember it's going to be H1, except the end tag is going to have a slash right before the word. So if I minimize this, that's what it looks like. So H1, the actual text, and then you close it out by doing H1, but a slash right before here. So bracket slash, and then the word. So that's what a H1 tag or headline tag is. Now, 
If you want to have a heading, but you don't want it to be as big as maybe the first headline, and maybe you have like a sub headline that you want it to be a little bit smaller, then the way this works is it increases the number. So it's a little bit backward thinking, but number one, if you think about top one, you know, number one, number two, number three. So if you think about like the Olympics, for example, the number one person, the number two person, number three person. So if you think about it that way, the number one person has a bigger prize. So in this case, bigger headline. The number two person has a, not as big as number one, but a lot bigger than number three. So that's kind of how it works. So if you want to decrease in size, it's going to go from H2, H3, H4, and so forth and so on. And you would do the exact same thing. This could be something like a sub headline text. And then we can close that off with slash H2. And this could be something like a sectional headline and we close it off in H3. So as the number gets bigger, the heading gets smaller, but it's still a headline. Now, when Google comes along, for example, and they read these headlines, they say, okay, this, this is a headline. Uh, this is a headline. This might be not as important as this headline. Uh, we don't know exactly, but that's what we've seen. Now, if you go back over to Composer and apply this knowledge that I have taught you, so we'll go here, we'll create a blank page. So besides the title, what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and I'm going to say headline text. Now, what I'm going to do is under it, body text drop down here, click on that and you're going to see heading one, two, three, four, five, six. So obviously the main big headline is going to be H1, right? Now, if I go to the source tab, you will be able to see that it does indeed say H1, headline text, and then it closes it, it off. Of course, if we highlight this again and we change to say heading two, you see how it gets smaller? Change it to heading three and it gets smaller. And the greater the heading, the smaller we get. So if you think about the Olympic analogy that I talked about earlier, that's how it works. So obviously this is heading three. So if we take a look at the source code here, we can see it starts with H3 and then it closes off. So I wanted to cover headlines simply because headlines are something that you're generally speaking going to use all the time, especially when it comes to landing pages, web pages, even WordPress any type of content management system will use this type of code and it's universal. So hopefully that makes sense and we'll move on to the next video. So the next thing I want to talk about is break tags. I briefly talked about this in the previous videos, but break tags is something that you're going to use over and over again. And most likely you will run into them or you'll run into a situation where you will need to use them. So what are break tags? Break tags are essentially pressing the enter key on your keyboard. So for example, we have sentence and then we have a sentence and then we press the enter on our keyboard. And as you can see, it goes down. So that's what break tags essentially do, but they do them within the HTML world. So if you want to spread images apart and have one image at the top, maybe a few breaks in between and then put an image and then maybe break it and then have a few paragraphs and break that paragraph apart. It really adds white space and makes things look a lot nicer so that they're not all clumped together. So that's really what break tags are all about. Now break tags, you'll see them sometimes and they'll look like this. So, I talked about this previously and I might have shown it to you previously, but they typically look like this. So let me make it a little bigger here. So they have the brackets around them like usual, and then they have BR. So BR lowercase, BR capitalized, and doesn't really matter. 
So I like to keep things consistently. So I try to do things lowercase. So it's really up to you. And because if you're thinking, does it really matter? Well, there you go. Now, break tags, they sometimes look like this. And then of course, the newer ones may look like this, where it has a BR space slash, but they do the same thing. Now, the break tag is not having, they don't have an open tag and close tag. It's just combined together. So essentially the break tag is the open and close tag itself. So this is one of the special cases where in this case, there isn't really an open and close. So what's nice about breaks is that let's say, for example, you have a word like a whole paragraph. So we have paragraph like this. So we do this and I'll, I'll make this, I'll make a paragraph like this. Okay, so this is a paragraph. What's nice about the break is yes, if you are using a HTML WYSIWYG editor like Composer, you can simply go through and press enter, right? Now, if you're looking at the code from the standpoint of just the code itself and you want to put breaks into the paragraph or the images and it's just not doing it, then you can always go into the code and you can find where there should be breaks and just put the BR tag. You can put the BR tag here and let's say I want to break here. I want to break here and I want to break maybe here, here and here. So when I copy this over, let's say for example, into composer, into the source tag, maybe under right here, you can see that there are breaks. So we've broken it up here. Now, if we go back to the source tab and we say, okay, it had a break, but we want an additional break to create kind of a empty space or a line in between these paragraphs. So if that's the case, then all I have to do is add two breaks connected to each other. So there we go. So obviously adding breaks is very, very easy. And when I go back to the normal view, I'm able to see that. So. Like I said, the majority of cases you can use a WYSIWYG editor, but there are some cases that you will run into where the editor is messing up or even WordPress. I've seen sometimes when editing WordPress editors, sometimes you're editing the code and you're running into issues. And by knowing that I can go to the source code and simply add a break tag to the source code, it makes life a lot easier. So same thing with images, you can add an image. So we can go here, we can add an image like so, but let's say for example, that it looks like this, you know, you got text here and then you got an image here. So what I would personally do is I would find with, if with a WYSIWYG editor, obviously all you have to do is press enter, right? But if you, we're reading the code and you couldn't figure out why maybe the editor was doing that. You could find the image, which is defined by the image tag right here, which you'll learn later on. But once you find that, all I have to do is add a break tag to it. Let's say, for example, I want to add three break tags, go back to normal view and you can see that there have been three break tags right here. So that's what the break tag does. And it actually comes in very, very handy in many, many cases. You wouldn't believe how many cases it would come in handy and it doesn't really make sense right now, but it'll make a lot more sense when you begin to set up your landing pages, set up your WordPress sites and everything like that. And it just makes life a lot easier when you understand how to use it. So that's how simple break tag is. Just remember it's a BR or sometimes it's BR slash as well. So I like to just keep it simple, stick with that. And there you go. So let's talk about text formatting, basically bolding words, italicizing words, or even underlining words. Now this is a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to break it down. Now, as you can see here, it starts with the span tag. 
and we have span style equals quotation quotation and within the quotation you pretty much have all the formatting and then of course you close that span tag off right here now as you read it it'll make more sense so font weights or if you think about weights an analogy of you know how heavy something is or something light bold is something that if you think about bold and you bold a letter and you if you were to be able to kind of measure the weight of a letter and you bold it you make the font weight bold so what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to give you some analogies that would make sense it doesn't necessarily have to be the case but these are things that i use in my own brain to memorize these things so font weight equals bold font style we have different styles like fonts we have italicize we have other different styles and then of course we have text decoration so you could decorate the text with an underline so it would make more sense if we go back over to composer here and like i said in the beginning i would recommend you as much as possible to do a step and then take a look at the source code and then do a step and then take a look at the source code so what i mean by that is remember bold the word then look at the source code see what changes before you do anything else and then go back italicize it see what changed and then what i would do from that point would be try to memorize that now if i were you i wouldn't really go all out i would just memorize the basics so bold italicize and underline because that's the main stuff that you're going to use if you get all fancy that's fine but if you do that go with composer and just copy and paste the code into the editor whatever that might be using so if we go back here right now the hello tag or the hello word has nothing around it except for break tags and the basic structure right now if i go to normal and i make it a larger font size and I go back to source we can see that the only change mainly is that there is a big tag surrounding it right now let's make it bold so we'll start from scratch say hello this is a test we'll just make it bold and let's see what happens so if we go back to the source we can see that it says span style quotation quotation and it says font weight bold and that's all it says so all you have to do is memorize this right here so that that's all you have to memorize so with span style quotation quotation within that font dash weight colon space bold okay so now let's remove the bold and let's just do it italicize if we click on source and you take a look at it, it says span style quotation quotation font dash style colon space italic so you're basically saying the font style is italic and then you put a semicolon right here if you want to add more so if we want to add something like font dash weight colon bold we could do that as well and we can see that it has bold and italicize now if we add a underline and we click on source we can see that text decoration so text dash decoration colon space underline the semicolon as you can see kind of separates the differences so we have three different items here and you can see that this after this we put a semicolon to say that we're separating this and this so this is a new item we have a semicolon and then a new item so that's what i recommend that you do there's a lot of different other different formatting if you want to learn so if we uncheck all of these and you go up to the top and click on format you can see that composer gives you a lot more options such as font different types of font you have sizes different types of sizes you have text style so 
Besides bold italicize and underline, you have strike through, superscript, subscript, fix with, and other types of text styles. But for the majority of the time, you're going to use these three. You're rarely going to use all of these other ones. So that's why I wanted to show you this. Then, of course, you have text color. So if we stick with the simplicity and we just change this to, say, red, click OK. You can see that the span style, same thing. It says color dash red. So it HTML, as you can see, is one of the easiest languages because what you see is what you get. And when you say like color red, it's pretty obvious that the color in this case is red. So if you wanted to hack HTML code and you had a bunch of code, you could literally go through it and figure out what 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 it is about simply by learning these basics that I'm teaching you in this video course and then just testing it out yourself and by trial and error. Because remember, at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff will only stick in your mind if you practice. So with that said, hope you enjoyed this video. Let's move on to the next video. So let's talk about how to create lists. And I'm going to talk about two different types of lists, ordered lists and unordered lists, or what we call bulleted lists. And these are things that you are going to use often. So the first thing I want to do is show you what the unordered list looks like. And obviously unordered meaning bulleted. So we have something like this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So this would be considered a unordered list. Okay. So if we think about the abbreviation of an unordered list, it is unordered list, right? So that's the tag UL. So we have bracket. You make it a little bigger and then we to close that bracket of course it is ul and then bracket and the slash right now lists are a little bit different than normal tags because within each list you have the actual li so li stands for the bullet or the list item all right so you can have as many LIs as you want to. So you're going to need to have LI and slash LI. So this tells us right here that this is a list. So let me do this again. Let's say, for example, we want to duplicate dog, cat. So we start the unordered list with this tag, right? And then we finish the list with this tag. Now each one of these items are going to be this, right? So this is going to be dog, cat, and hamster. Pretty simple, right? So after you understand that concept that you have the open tag here, the close tag here, and then the items that are surrounded by the li tag. So li dog slash li li cat close the tag li hamster and then close that tag all right so now that you understand that what i want to talk about now is order lists now order lists are going to be something like one two three four five right so if i switch it to this the only items that need to change here are the open tag and the close tag. Everything else, the allies stay the same. Now, if you think about the abbreviation for ordered list, that's OL, right? OL. Pretty simple. So we open this order list. We have the three items. And then, of course, right below that, we close the slash OL, right? So that's basically how to create an order list. So once you have that concept and understanding of an order, unorder list and an order list, it's the same thing except for the open and close tag or the main ones. Now, if we head on over to composer here, you can actually see the same thing. So if I create a unorder list, 
and we'll do the same thing. We'll say dog, cat, hamster, and maybe we'll throw a few things other than that inside. We could say gecko. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that you can see it. Now, if I go to the source code here, you can see that it is UL and then close UL, right? And then, of course, in between the unordered list, we have LI and then LI. Now, as far as formatting goes, you notice that it says big, 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 and then slash big. So, so that's how to create it, and that's how easy it is. Now, if I were to highlight this and put it into ordered or numbered lists, we call it order lists, because if you go to source and you look at it, the only thing that has changed is the UL to OL. So unordered list changed to the order list, and then we close that tag down. So if you can understand this process, then creating lists of two different types is very, very easy to do. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Okay, so welcome back. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the image tag. And this tag you are going to run into over and over again. Now, you're looking at this tag thinking, wow, this is kind of complicated. And not really. If we basically the image tag really looks like this. The all the rest of it I'll explain in just a minute. So Image tag allows you to grab any image, whether it's an external image from a different website or even your internal image that might be sitting on your website. It acts just like a hyperlink and which you'll learn later on. But where it starts out with is the tag here, of course, these brackets surrounding it and it starts with IMG standing for image or short and then you put a space and then you put src which stands for source or basically image source equals quotations quotations and then of course the file name inside now like i said this could be a file that is sitting on your server it doesn't necessarily have to be a dot jpeg or dot jpg it can be a .png file. It can be a .gif. Any sort of image file, it will work. So this could link here. This could link to www.yourdomain.com slash image name.jpg or whatever the image extension might be. So that's how easy it is to create a image tag and without having to even go to composer you can simply type this in and pull any any image that you want in now what you saw earlier was the alt tag so if we add an alt tag so after we've done this after the quotation has closed that url off now we can put a space and we can put the word alt equals quotation quotation and alt tag is basically going to tell google or any other search engine robot what the image is all about so what you're doing is you're taking it a step further and making it more search engine friendly so the alt tag is pointing to what it is all about so let's say for example this is an image of a puppy so let's say a golden retriever puppy. So you would type in golden retriever puppy and you might be able to type in what it's doing. Maybe it's biting and your, your image is about how to stop puppies from biting. So Google will read that and it will say, okay, this must be about golden retriever puppy biting. Does the content that is surrounding it actually relate to this? And if it does, then that's a good sign. Now, the other stuff that you saw was the what we call the style, the width, and height. Now, typically, you're not going to run into that unless you want to resize 
the image. So I'm not really going to teach you that right now. I, I would rather you go to Composer and test it out there, but I don't want to overwhelm you. And I want you to just memorize that you have the tag here. So let's do that again. So starting from scratch, image source, remember? So I like to start with the bracket. Now the image tag does not have a closed tag necessarily. It's just IMG SRC, so image source equals that. So I like to do that. And then I put the file name inside and the extension. And that's essentially it. And then alt tag equals quotation, quotation, and then the SEO friendly keyword. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, whenever you add the width and the height, that is only if you want to resize it. So if you want to resize it, then you can add a width and height. But for now, I just want you to learn the basics and let's jump on over to Composer and I'll show you. So if I go to Composer here and let's say, for example, that I'm going to center align this image, I'm going to go ahead and click on image and I'm going to go ahead and find an image. Now these images are on my computer, obviously. So if I click on do not use alternative text. And typically with Composer, if you do not enter alternate text, it will ask you and it will give you a warning message. So you want to enter the alternate text, which is basically the what Google robots see to see what your image is all about. So we can say how to say puppy biting. And we'll click OK. And there we go. So obviously, this is not an image of a puppy biting, but I'm just using this as an example. Now, if you click on source here, you will see that it we can see the IMG and the SRC down here. Now, of course, there's a style down here, which is telling us the style and the alt tag. But if we were to remove this, this is what it would look like. We can see IMG SRC equals the location of the file. Now, I've said this before, but Composer will generally directly link to your computer and you don't want that. You want it to link to your website or to the file. So if this HTML file is located in the same folder as your image, then you can simply remove everything and just simply put the file name between the quotations. And that's probably the easiest way to go. Now, if your image is in a specific location on your website, the easiest thing to do is find the location and then put the location here. Just make sure that this is not linking to your computer because when you upload it to the internet, nobody else can see your computer except for you. So it may work for you, but it's not going to work for everybody else. So I'm going to leave it at that and so we can keep it simple. But if you ever want to resize it via Composer without needing to know all the width and height and all the styling and stuff like that, you can always double click it and go to dimensions and you have the actual size here. You can do custom size. And what I like to do is make sure that the constraint option is selected simply because if a picture, let's say, for example, is 900 by 597, you don't want to distort it when you decrease it down to 500. You want to keep the width and the height scale the same. So when I press OK, it looks like this, right? Now, if I don't press the constraints, as you saw I did earlier, and I just do something like 500, and I press OK, you can see how it has distorted the image itself. So that's another little tip that I have with utilizing Composer. So by all means, if you want to stick with Composer, great, that's fine. But I'd highly recommend you at least memorize this simple tag because when it comes to editing with WordPress or any type of content management system that utilizes an HTML editor, sometimes you're going to run into snags along the way. And if you know this tag, then you can get past simply simple roadblocks. All right, so hope you enjoyed that video and we'll move on to the next one. So I want to just say congratulations on reaching the end of this video course. 
This is video number nine, and we are gonna talk about hyperlinks. Hyperlinks are things that you're going to run into a majority of the time, simply because depending on what you want to do, majority of the time you're gonna to want to link to an external website from a specific keyword, what we call anchor text, and you may want to link within your website itself. So what I found over the years is a lot of the stuff that I've taught you, you will see. But when it comes to hyperlinks, this is one of the main things that you're gonna see because linking to other websites or even within your website is very, very important. And not just linking, being able to know how to link and then when somebody clicks on that link, it doesn't exit your website, but and instead it opens it in a new window so people stay on your website. You know, getting it so that the link goes in a new window is important to know as well. So let me explain to you in a lot more detail so that you fully understand. So if at this point you're you're thinking, well, I'm a little bit confused here. It's okay. So let's start from scratch. If we think about it, before we even talk about this, let's say for example that we have a paragraph. And on that paragraph or even that image, which we'll talk about later, we want to turn maybe this specific keyword, let's say for example, it, at the end of the paragraph it says click here, and we want to turn that into a hyperlink. So the question is how do we turn this word into a link? so that we link from here to an external page and so forth. So what I'm highlighting right here is what we call the anchor text. And you'll hear this being thrown around a lot, but the anchor text is the text that is linking to an external website or to an internal URL. So now that you understand that, you can hy hyperlink this and turn that into anchor text. You can anchor text any word that you want or even any image. So to break things down here, this is essentially what it looks like. So you need the anchor text, right? Which is gonna be the text that you highlight. And then the hyperlink is going to be the link that you're going to link them to. And then this is merely just the action. So when they click on the hyperlink, and they read the anchor text and they click on it, then they go to another website or URL. So that's how the process works. And now once you understand the process here, let's talk about how to break it down. So let's say we'll use click here because that's common. So the tag looks like this, bracket obviously, right? And it starts with an A. So I like to do this, A and then bracket, slash a because it gets a little bit more complicated after this but not as complicated so it's generally sp better to just start with that and slash a after the a you put h r e f equals quotation quotation and within the quotation you want to put the url or the hyperlink within the quotations so we're going to do http colon slash slash www.yourdomain.com. So this could be within your website or it could be any website. It doesn't matter. Now, what I highly recommend is if it is your own website, then you can leave it like that. Now, within here, you're going to want to put the anchor text. So the anchor text was click here, right? So if I were to just finish at this point and I were to click the click here, then it's going to bring me to this URL right here. Now, this is something that I would use if I were linking or interlinking within my own website because I don't really want it to open in a brand new window. Now, if I were to link to an external website and I want people to stay on my website, as well, then here's what I would do. So we go back over here and before this end tag or the original tag here, bracket closes, we put another space and we put the word target and we do equals 
quotation, quotation, and then we put underscore blank. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, target means where you want them to go. So what it means is we open it in a new window. So underscore blank means in a new window. And this is essentially you're just going to have to memorize this. But if you want them to open a brand new window, I would put that. So if you can get to this point, just adding the underscore blank and target equals quotation underscore blank quotation, close that off. You'll open it in a brand new window. So believe it or not, as simple as this can be, if you memorize it, you will be set as far as creating hyperlinks and creating backlinks to other sites. And this is something that you're going to run into many, many times in the future. And you can do the same thing. If this is a zip file, let's say for example, that you want people to download a zip file, then you can simply link them to the zip file. So yourdomain.com, let's say it is in the downloads folder and it's called 123.zip or even 123.mp4, a video file. So as long as you have the URL that links to whatever you might want them to do, download the zip, watch a video, go to a blog or website, that's where you're going to put it here. So this can apply to many, many different cases, but we're just creating a link to link them directly to something. And the target underscore blank works in all of these cases, whether it's an MP4 file, a zip file or whatever, you can do the same thing. All right. Now that you understand this, you're good to go, but we can always go back over to here and we can go here. We're going to, let's say, we'll put a center line. We'll do click here and I'm going to make it bold a little bit bigger so you can see it. But if you highlight it, click on link and you link them to a location, google.com, for example, you can do link is to be open in a new window. And to be honest, you're not really going to use all these other ones. Mainly you're going to use the open a new window or open in the same window. So if I go ahead and click OK, click on source code, then you'll be able to see the actual code. So embedded into here, if you notice, it says A H R E F equals quotations, the URL quotations space target equals quotations underscore blank quotations. And then within these here, we have the anchor text. And then we close the A tag and that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, if we were to hyperlink an image on the other hand, you can see what it looks like. So let's find an image here. Now within composer, you can go to link and you can actually link it over here. Now, if we take a look at the source code here, you will see that the link is here. Now, as you can see, the link is outside of the image. So we have the link here. We haven't closed the A tag yet. We put the image here and then we close the A tag so that the image essentially is like the anchor text. So if I go back over to here, we can do that by simply putting the image replacing the click here with the image code. And you could do the same thing with other media as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video course as much as I enjoy teaching you and make sure that you go back. Some of this is memorization and just, I would say just utilize composer and tweak it and learn it every step of the way, make one step, look at the code, see what changed. And as you do it more and more and more and practice and practice and practice, it'll stick in your mind. You'll memorize it and you'll be good to go when that time comes, when you're utilizing something like WordPress or anything like that, and you run into a snack. 